Hello and welcome to part two of Crested Butte Valley. Okay, part two is Balance Day and uh, so the majority of this um, session, 30 minutes or so, is are these too dark, these are too light, balancing those things, more blue, more gray, more warm, and uh, that's what I did. However, Sometimes, when you walk in and you see your painting, you haven't seen it for a few hours, in my case it was overnight, the barn shape had to be fixed. So I encourage you, when you have those shape problems, get those done right away. And that's the first thing I did when I started on that painting. From then on, I did balance. So, there you go. Um, get outside and paint. Paint with your friends, get critiques, and um, enough of me preaching. Let's get to today's part two. All right, thanks. Hey everyone, welcome to part two of, uh, let's see, this is Crested Butte Valley. And um, wow, we covered everything with paint yesterday. And uh, off camera, I worked around these bushes here a little bit and tried to get a little bit of ultra blue up in these mountains. And this is incorrect, so we'll have to start from scratch up here today. This is a good time if you have a shape problem. I know when I come in and I get a fresh look at my paintings, if something's wrong, it's best to get that done at the beginning of the session. So. I think uh, when I came in, I immediately saw that this um, plane here, this uh, barn is supposed to be on this plane with this uh, area right here. So I'm going to make that correction first. Then I'm going to spend my time balancing these values, making sure the brights are bright and the darks are dark. And the in-betweens should be in-between. So that's the whole goal for this section, which is balance. That's why. I talk about balance all the time. It's extremely, extremely important. So, um, let's get down here to business and see what I can do about getting a mixture here for the barn. I got some transparent oxide red, a little bit of alizarin. Might be too light. Let me get some brown in there. This is transparent oxide brown, brought it down nicely. One more transparent oxide brown. Nice, pure, clean mixture. Good, good. And let's see, here is our plane. And let's start making the shape of that barn a little bit more defined. Looks like I got a number two. Uh, long flat 2025 rosemary. And I think there's another little area coming here. So that made the area a little bit bigger. I'm going to put this off to the side because I'll probably need it. And clean my palette. I'm going to make some sort of a blue see. Let me get a little gray and you can mix some um, ultra and some white, a little bit of gray, and I'll come in with the right value, almost. A little bit of a mixture left over from yesterday. Actually, it's a little higher than the barn. Okay, get that. Didn't see that yesterday. It's funny how you see things with a fresh, fresh eye. 
Get that a little lighter. A little bit lighter right on the top. Okay. And I will also carry that over into this area here. I need to do some gray shaping around the um, around the barn. So I just got some Richardson coal gray and I'm going to get a little bit of cobalt in there. And let's see. Perfect, it's working. And get rid of some of that. Okay, I think we're now in a little bit better place. I think my browns might be too light in value. And I'm going to get a little bit more angle on my roof here. A little bit more. There we go. Let me get this taken care of here. Just working on my shapes here. And okay, now. When I look at this, my I'm just going to make this lighter area light all the way across the top and forget about that tree for now. And all right, this mountain needs to go lighter. So let's see what we can do about mixtures up in there, okay? Switching gears. Let's see, I've got some blue here. Let me just, blue-gray. Let me see what happens when I add some. It's a nice light gray. I think we need some ultra also. And I think we need some darker ultra. I'll put some cobalt in there. And I'll lighten that a little bit. These guys might be able to get me out of my trouble area. So I'm going to work right here in this mountain. So I want to make sure I have the right tool. And I might just stick with what I have. Let me check my surplus pile here just a little bit. And I'm going to pull out a little bit wider fan. This looks good. I might use this later. And get a new rag with a towel so I don't contaminate. Okay, so I'm going to go into the lighter mixture right now. And even lighter. So I'm going to get more white in this mixture. I apologize, Miss Studio Cat is now making yourself known over there by the fire. And I'm looking at the reference as much as I can to see if I can get some inspiration from that. And also double checking my my shapes, making sure they're in a good place. Okay, this feels dark up here, so let me get a little bit more of this up in here, and then go to the blue mixture with a little bit of gray, blue-gray, Blue-gray with a little white, and let's see what this does. Not enough. Sorry. Don't lighten that up. I'm lightening up the, this is the ultra and cobalt mixture over here on the left. And here we go. Better, much better. Now we're talking. 
to go a little darker. And add a little gray to it. Add a little bit more gray. There's a lot going on in this mountain over here. A frosty mountain. I think it's it's got a lot of trees in it, and then it's got some bare areas, and there's some dark right up in here. And I think we need some light now. Gonna get back and see how that battle's doing. Okay, with that, let's see what we can do with some lights right along here. There's a real strong ridge of light, so I just loaded up my knife with this light mixture I have, and I'm defining this nice long streak along here. It's really straight and probably characteristic of the valley here. And I think that might be about where we need to be. I've got the monitor in the way. I'm going to move that just slightly over here. And now I'm going to put some more strokes of light here. And then I'm going to put some more right in this triangle. Right up to the barn. Again, this is the balance phase, so I'm really concentrating on trying to get the values right. And I think I have to go to brush now. Here we go. Kind of brightening it up. And I'm going to bring this light right up to this barn right here. And then there's another patch of light right in here. I know this is kind of, these are crude strokes, but you'll see after a while here that it's good to have them down. We can do all the finesse in the next phase, which is called detail. Okay, I want to get some good strong lights right in here. Okay. And I'm going to put some other, not such strong strokes, but up in the area behind us, up in these trees right here. And there's some good strong lights coming right down here to these structures. Trying to get a nice angle on this roof just by using the background color. I'm going to blue up these trees a little bit and I'm going to add some yellow ochre to it now. To these trees on the side just to give it some, some character of light. See, just a little bit of yellow ochre in that blue mixture gives it a really nice, nice texture. And I'll use some of that back in here also. Just kind of shows light. And let's see what I can do with my knife here on this area. I'll put some right in here. Oh, 
Oh, I lost that nice definitive light in there. Let me see if I can get that back. It's my white. And there's a big swath of it. Good. That says light. And now I'll soften that one edge of it. Oops, lost my edge. Let me light up my. I got a. The image on my computer is coming on and off, so I'm going to set it for the computer to stay on for one hour, which is hooked up to this monitor over here on the right. Let me get this thing back where it should be so I can see it. All right, let's get back into this frosty area right in here. So I know we need some darks on the bottom of them. So let's get some uh, brown, ultra, brown, ultra. Ooh, man, that's dark. A little gray, a touch of viridian, nice and dark. Here we go. And I'm getting value balance now. See how I'm reinforcing some of my darks. And as I come forward, they get darker. As things go back, they get bluer and lighter. I think there's some other shrubbery right in here. Using the side of my brush to reinforce these darks. Get some red lizard in there too. Oh, that was too much. Back to Viridian to knock it down a little bit. Lighten it up with a little bit of yesterday's mixture. And let's get back into making darks. And let's work on, I think this goes more like this. And then it starts going uphill. It ends up toward this barn here. So it goes from big bushes to small bushes. And I'm just by the design, I'm showing the viewer that there's a slope here. And I'm changing the slope more vertical now as I come this way. In other words, you can see from my brush, it's kind of this different angle as we go from one side to the other. I want to get another good dark before I leave here. And there's a good dark coming off from the side of the barn. And underneath it, I don't know, I think it's fence or something. I want to go back to a lighter gray now with a little bit of cobalt. Oh, I said a little bit of cobalt, not that much. And let's get the frostier, get a little bit more dark in there. So we just go next door and as you can see from my mixture, I just stole some from whatever was next door.
Okay. So far, so good. I think there's something over here we need to put a big cottonwood over here. I'll lay that in. Right in here. You say, what about the fence? Maybe I should think about that. You're right. But I want to know where the fence is going to be. But that's the only thing I want to worry about right now. So I will make some brown, blue, and I will reinforce the fence line. And reinforce the fence line. That's about all I want to do for now. Now, with these lights in the back and these nice yellow ochre type showing up over here, kind of saying there's more light here on this side. I want to balance out the foreground. That will be the big challenge for the rest of this painting. Sorry for the fan coming out in the next room. Let me shut that. Might help a little bit. Okay. That's my heater. In the other room. I've got the wood stove going. And I can see that is exactly where Cinder's the cat is, is over by the, the wood stove. Yep, yeah. yelling to so she's happy. All right, let's work on a mixture that might work for us. I think I'm a little dark in, in the shadow. I've got this nice gray mixture here. I'm going to add just a touch of iridium. And now I'm going to add some white to it. And a little bit of cobalt. Touch a touch of viridian. Be careful with the viridian stuff. It really influences whatever it comes in contact with. Okay, I'm going to try this out and see how it works. So I'll try it in safe places, which is the background. So I will go back in here. See what it does. I think this is having a good influence back there. I don't know about the foreground. I will probably switch it around a little bit. But let me get back and judge it. Why I'm getting back, I'm I'm checking these values. I want to see if they're, you know, are they too dark, too light? Or are they right in the right place? I want to get a good, clean swath of this stuff in the right place to see what it's doing. What we are, we're in a shadow of a mountain. That's why the foreground is so, so dark. <coughs> Excuse me. I had to sneeze. All right. You can see I'm spending a little bit more time than I did in part one. I'm getting back and seeing what and how those values are working together. And gradually you start seeing this neat painting come together. Alrighty. Anyway, back in here is the river valley in here, and so everything's kind of sloping down toward the river. 
but we have these nice plateaus where the farm is. Let me get over here a little bit and frost up these trees with some blue. Just really like that touch. All right, let's take a look and see now with a little bit more blue how this foreground is going to work. So ultra, and I'm mixing that in with a little bit more blue, a little bit more cobalt, little bit, and let me see how that's going to work. It's got to be lighter. So I'm throwing in a little bit of white, and here we go. That is competing too much with the background. I went back to Ultra, a little bit of Viridian, kind of have a dark side of this mixture and the light side, so I'm going over to the, to the light side. Okay, I can see the difference between the two. And I think the dark side of this mixture is where we need to be, so I'll add some blue on this side. My two blues. There we go. It knocks it down. It's just a shade lighter, and I think it has a nice effect. And now I'm going to spend the rest of my time here working in and around these bushes. So you can see today I had to do some shape changes with the barn and making some adjustments in the highlighted area here, the high key areas. And now I'm going to work in and get my value right in the foreground area where there's not bushes. So that's what I'm going to do off camera. That's your homework. Or if you didn't keep up with me, uh, keep rewinding and, and catch up with me on where I'm at with this thing. But I'm going to work in and around these bushes and the fence and uh, hopefully that the foreground is going to be darker than the background. That's the big key. All right, thanks for coming by for part two and I'll see you tomorrow in part three. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye.